Welcome back. What I'd like to talk about now is caffeine. Now, we all know that in most coffees and teas, black, white, green tea especially, and there may be some other um, herbal teas that you can get your hands on that, con that naturally contain caffeine and some that may not be natural but still contain caffeine. My question to you, are you aware what caffeine does to you? Now, as a former lecturer at a university in the UK, from the research I understand was that caffeine has a half-life of around about six hours. So what does that mean? Well, what does caffeine do? We know that it's a diuretic. It takes fluids away from you. In other words, if you drink lots of products with caffeine, then you'll be constantly running to the bathroom. But also as a diuretic, it actually increases or affects the ANS, the autonomic nervous system. So that means that your heart rate is raised and your blood pressure is raised. Now there's also some research to show that caffeine can reduce weight. Well, not quite. What it does is it makes more readily available, I think, the calcium. And so athletes kind of love that stuff. Although with the Olympic Committee, there's, I can't remember the amount, but it's not going to be of a certain amount but it will assist them in um, energy production. In other words, they can go for longer and they don't increase what's called their OBLA, their onset of blood lactate accumulation. And I don't want to get too bogged down with the biochemistry or anything here. Suffice to say that if you have anything with caffeine after 12 p.m., at the very, very latest 1 p.m., then the chances are you will compromise your health and you won't be able to recover, in other words, sleep properly at night. So there's different forms that your brain goes through from beta, alpha, gamma, uh, theta, and these brain waves, we're ultimately we need to go into a deep sleep and that won't happen if you have caffeine in your body. Now some of you might say, but Magnus, you know what, I've been, I have a cup of tea or a coffee before I go to bed and I sleep like a log. Again, trust me, I'm not a doctor. The chances are you won't be sleeping as deeply as you could. In other words, your body won't be able to fully release the melatonin from the pineal gland and allow your body to recover and your cortisol won't maybe too high. So my invite to you is by all means have something with caffeine in it in the morning, but don't just use it to get yourself all fired up because your adrenals are fatigued. A lot of my clients, you know, they'll drink they'll drink coffee just to, you know, get themselves woken up because they wake up in the morning like their death warmed up and they think, ah oh, ping you know, or they're popping along to Tim Hortons just to get their caffeine fix. So understand the root cause. But if you do have one or two drinks with caffeine in, that's fine. But do not have them after 12 noon or certainly no later than 1 p.m. Or as I said, you won't be able to sleep properly and ultimately it'll affect your circadian rhythms, your sleep patterns, your whole well-being. OK, so that's about caffeine. No caffeine after 12, but by all means have it before. Decaffeinated, unless it's processed, uh, I think it's a cold press way, then it's really not a healthy thing to have because once you denature something or take something out that was naturally in it, I got a problem with that. That's a personal opinion. I hope you found that useful. Have yourself a wonderful, gorgeous, loving day. My love to you all. Bye for now.